Hi everyone. Hi guys. Great to see you again. Uh, we're still back out here in our lovely spring seclusion. Um, COVID safe. It's COVID safe. It's all law abiding. And we both had COVID stuff. as well. We actually have and we're both fine and we can't give it to each other now, I don't think. Not for a while. Um, so we wanted to talk about another house and I love it because we've got another, another house I'd never even heard of. and. I doubt whether many people out there would have, would have sort of come across this house. No, I don't, I don't think so. This is just one I saw a little bit of uh, chatter on a few Facebook groups and Instagram pages. So it's an all natural house mm. and... Um, Quite rare. Yeah, as, as I said before, I, 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 I don't go out of my way to find all natural houses. Um, and I'm not someone who is, you know, I, I don't love all natural fragrances. I don't think because it's all natural it necessarily means it's better. No, um, no, not at all. Actually, I, I, I tend to, if anything, think the opposite. Yeah, and very often you have performance issues and, I mean, not that that's the be all and end all, but sometimes they just, they can be a bit closed and a bit They can be good. I mean, Chion Reinhold, I think is a great example. They're great, wonderful. great, yeah. great, great national, uh, natural perfumery, but I hope it's not a gimmick. I hope it's because, mm. you know, it's just their the, um, medium and it's successful. So this yeah. is uh, Katana. Um, so this is from a perfumer. His name is, I'm trying to get it right, Alp. Folio Gugliari. I'm sorry about the, the pronunciation. So I think I left that one to Dan. I've got no chance with it. I, 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 I don't know a huge amount of him. I believe he's Turkish, um, but maybe lives in France. A lot of the website also have um, bits in French as well. Um, if you know any better, please do correct me. I'm apologising if I get anything wrong. This is a new brand for 2021. Three fragrances which have been released. One which is going to be released soon. We're recording this in April, so the fourth one isn't yet released. As I said, they are all, all natural. Um, Exciting. I bought these samples uh, from Arabian Perfumes in UK, which is an online website, uh, which I knew because they sell Botnikoff and Arisia Dori and things like that. And I, I saw these fragrances and thought they looked cool they also sell them um, at sealed essence in the u.s and a few other places as well so let's chat we more stuck in. so i'm glad that we have a, a website here that sells these things um yeah arabian um yeah, I must so, yeah yeah they've got some they've got some cool cool stuff so as is often the case here so i have had these um for a few weeks so i've smelt them on skin so you're going to get my um opinion of the kind of dry down of things but you're going to get joe's opinion tasters. dan is like an investigative journalist he goes out there and seeks these things out you're a sniffer dog and i'm a sniffer dog <laughs> smells nothing but what wax is literally. i mean look at look at the nice color there yeah how much is discolored so this is orange cordu again i'm there's not much online about well, this, I'm not sure what the name is. I think Cordoba may r refer to Cordoba, which is an area in Andalusia in Spain. Anyway, orange. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So. It's <laughs> very interesting. So this is an animalic orange. <sighs> And what, so looking at the, the notes list from this, one thing I smell straight away on this card um, uh, and that becomes increasingly dominant in the fragrance and especially notices it on the skin is this Siberian Castorium. So I recognize this particularly because I've got um, mm. some Siberian Castorium tincture um, at home, which I own, and, I, and I, I'm pretty sure it's the same one that's used here. I should have said, so this is a 30 mil X-ray, which costs wow. 195 pounds. So it's quite, it's pretty, pricey, it, it? it's pretty pricey. What are your... <laughs> I get something quite meaty, like orange with, orange with a kind of a, a room temperature leg of lamb You're quite fatty <laughs> yeah 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 i think that's i think i think that's fair i mean I, you get there's this is animalic from the outset even though the yeah. even though the, the the kind of zesty orange is quite pronounced at the first um sniff but already rapidly sort of yeah. diminishing into the background I, 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 and on skin i actually think it, it it's even more so i even i found it on skin to be almost a little bit chaotic really <laughs> um um this opening. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've, I've not smelled anything quite like that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely fatty. Yeah, it like is. Like marrow or something like. Yeah, I should have bought you some of this, the, um, 
the castor the, this Siberian castorum is it, it really is an amazing material. I mean, I, I would describe it as a slightly boozy uh, leather animalic, but it's this rich, sweet animalic leather, mm. which I really is it. it's one of the most amazing materials um, I own. And it, it really uh, dominates this. But I do understand what you mean by thick and fatty. Yeah, and, it's, you know, something that you know is a little bit raw. Yeah. It's, I just feel it's weird that we feel I've got a lot of, there's a lot of bass in the top of this. Do you know what I, Yes, absolutely. Straight away you're getting what would feel like three hours later. Because I do feel this, that whilst, that, whilst that it is orange it feels like it needs either some like incense and cardamom or you know you need some synthetic like you, some you need some really aldehydes long. to give some brightness and zing to the top yeah i find it quite troubling in a sense not not i don't mean in terms of worrying but i mean the the smell is troubling the, you know the way it goes so quickly to something uh, quite animalic and I kind of, I long for a bit of a journey, maybe, something to get yeah. there. I mean, I, of course on skin it will do, it will open yeah. up and do things, but. Do you want to try it on the skin? Because this is quite an interesting. Yeah, look. is that right? There's also, there's quite a lot of, um, oh. there's a bit of lemon. I think it's probably citral because it's got a bit of a, a lemon, quite a strong lemongrassy vibe as well. But even, I think on mm, skin even yeah. more so, it's, it's more, just dominated by this um, castorium. I can't, yeah, I, I can't shake, I can't shake this feeling of rubbing really quite warm but raw lamb <laughs> on, on my head. It's kind of weird, but... Yeah, in a good way, I like... I do like it. It's, it's, it's kind of comforting yeah. in a sense, troubling in another sense. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a great, I think it's a great showcase of what is a wonderful material. I just... And I, lo and I love wearing it because I, I, love, I love the castorium and it's a great um, material to experience. I just, for me, I felt this was not a complete fragrance. No, absolutely. I would, I would totally agree with you. It, it behaves in a similar way to Civet by Zoologist. That it just, it feels like you're, you're spraying something on and you've had amnesia for the past three or four hours and you've missed, you've missed the little journey that comes yeah, yeah. I just, I think there needs to be a little, this needs to be a little bit more 3D. Yeah. Whilst the castorum does, you know, um, you know, there's a good, there's a really good glug of really good high quality Siberian castorum, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, the, the quality does shine through. The that, quality is, that feels like it's fantastic. A1 and very, very, you're obviously very natural, very, kind of very smoothly conceived, but mm. I just, it doesn't, doesn't wow me in, yeah. in any way. And I think also, maybe because it was a, a material which I recognise, I think, oh yes, I know what that is, I've got that and I've used it. And I, I, yeah, I just don't think it's quite, I think to have a, a great material on its own is not quite enough. I don't think no, this is quite no, no. a full fragrance. Even though, I mean- fizzy. There's yeah, it's fizzy. Like kind of something sparkly. Well, I wonder if that's, is, is that's the, I think it's citral which is what gives the lemon, it's almost like a lemon sherbet. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and again, I guess, I assume it's the natural isolate, as it's not natural. It's, in it's interesting <coughs> for sure, but I, I'm not sure when I would wear it. I, that sounds really negative, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. what, what is that? It's, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Great, great quality, great materials. Um, okay. Let's move next? on to Santal, San, uh, Santal Cigar. So cigar means um, fresh in Indonesian. This is another 30 mil X-ray and it costs... A little patters of rain there or something. It shouldn't be raining there, the sky is <laughs> um, It's 205 pounds for a 30 mil X-ray. Oh, I'm getting something quite sparkly there. Oh, this I think is really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this. Oh, That's what Sandalwood is, is all about. This is really, really, really beautiful. I get there's a lovely, bright, fizzy freshness. I can't, I can't even yeah. remember what the official notes are, but I, I imagine there's yuzu, or, or um, some kind of frizzy, frizzy, sit, fizzy citrus. 
I would say easy, yeah. but immediately you're just struck yeah. by the creaminess and richness yeah. of this beautiful salmon. It, it slightly reminds me again of Tion Reithold, um that blue lotus, oh, yeah. which is yeah. uh, which is very sandalwood uh, heavy. Mm, I like the fact that that has that has that creaminess right away. Yeah, you know, it's it's not something you're waiting for it to settle down into. Even in the top, you perceive that mm. smooth cream. Oh god, it's really good. Uh, but there's an amazing, but there's, there's a peppery as well. There's a, yeah, there's a searing freshness to it as yeah. well. Don't you think? Absolutely. I think that I mean they've got to be really there's good. there's a lot of white floor in the middle of this as well. Uh, I think you, you so there's. Yeah, some, I can see it poking its head out already. Which I kind of is a, such an, an obvious segue with, with with that sandalwood, jasmine, ylang ylang. Yeah. Just working with that creaminess. It gives it an opulence and it gives it a, a vintage, a vintage nod again. And it makes me think of some kind of, not kind of walking through a night garden with, mm. you know, narcotic flowers in full bloom, just like this heady yeah. smell of the flowers. It's really heady, isn't it? Just, oh. You know, despite having all of that clear, kind of rich undertone. It's still, it's very, it's very It's almost and, dizzying. It's yeah. kind of bright and... Really turns your head. And it, it is, it's what you're getting on the card. It's even more so on, mm. on, on skin. Um, and I got... Uh, Beautiful. It got a quite moderate, um, moderate performance, as you'd expect from, from an actual film. Um, so it wasn't huge, but it, I got, it lasted reasonably long time, kind of six to eight hours. Um, yeah. I, I could smell it pretty well. But considering how beautiful those six to eight hours were, I would, I would be very happy in terms of performance. Yeah, it's quite a private sort of perfume, isn't it? But I think more but and more I think I it's like it. I think it's beautiful, and it's and I think he's really, uh, as opposed to the last uh, one where I think he had this beautiful ingredient, the castorium, and I don't think he quite um, took it. He didn't quite show it off quite yeah, as well as, as he could. He didn't feel quite finished. Journey, did it? I feel this found this, there's quite, there's a good deal of finesse here, and it feels a little bit aldehydic. I don't know, just yeah, I, maybe that, I think that's just the effect. Something. That's just the, the the effect of the the sandalwood, and I think yeah, the yuzu on the top, it's one of my favourite citruses because it's got a good deal of bitterness yeah, with brightness. Absolutely, um, it's that really, really, works, really doesn't it? Really, really beautiful. This is, I mean, it's. I'm struggling to think of better sandalwood fragrances. Yeah, I mean, it's... Blue Lotus by RMP is really good, but... It's an absolute, it's an absolute first rate. But if you, if you love mm. sandalwood, you must check this out. It's sort of unadulterated sandalwood as well, you know? It's the essence of sandalwood. Yeah. I mean, some other things on top, but you really you perceive that this is a real tribute to sandalwood. Oh, God, it's so good. And it it's, puts it right in the It's beautiful in the to wear. Line. Mm, yes, Daniel. <laughs> yes, yes. I like it. Right. Hit me up with some more. Where right. So something completely different. So this oh, is uh, Ouz Damascena. So this is more expensive than the others. This is £260 for 30 mil x-ray. So you're talking quite a lot more than most Arise So this this is an expensive perfume. Can you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's quite a huge, <laughs> I think, quite a huge barnyardy oud. Straight away. <laughs> so I think this is a, this is a wild Bangladeshi wow. oud, and it's very, very, very big. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's immediately. Um, like falling down a, a sort of a rabbit hole. You know, it, as if yeah. the ground opens up and says, right, you're coming with me into the, into the kingdom of, of absolute wonderful filth. I mean, yeah, my wife, I, I sprayed this on my wife walked past and she said, it actually smells like you're like sitting in horseshit. But I think it's, I think it's nicer than that. I, <laughs> I think it's got, it's got this beautiful lean quality as well. I, I perceive the kind of the depth, but I also perceive this really this kind of really focused thing in the top, like um, I thought that, that glossy paint thing well, as well, which I love. I, I think really love what it. I get is this, and I will get more and more and more as I wear it, is a burnt wood quality, which I ah. think, which I think adds the, which I think is the kind of 
possibly the focus you're talking about. Yeah. The, 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 as well as this kind of like broad thing, there's, there's a kind of a, a burnt quality. It feels like uh, it has a center as well as the big opulent, yeah. uh, you know, surround. Yeah. It's a shame in, in, mm. in something wow. which says, I mean, this is very, in terms of value for money, you're obviously getting your oud because yeah. there's no yeah. question that there is a lot of real oud in, in here. Um, especially yeah. when I wore it on skin, I would have liked to have perceived the rose earlier. I don't know if you will even get yeah. that far on, on the card. You definitely do get the rose eventually. Um, so it's got rose otto and Damascus rose um, and rose de mai. Um, and, but <clears throat> I think the thing, whilst it has those roses, I think this needs Taif rose because it's so... Yeah. I think lots of these kind of Hindi Assam ouds, which have got this heavy, like, fermented barnyard quality, you need the searing freshness of a Taif rose. I know yeah, Taif is really expensive, um, but I think they are... You, you don't get it for a while, and even once they start to, to, to appear, they're not, they don't have that searing freshness, which no, I think this kind of oud... It needs produce. the counterbalance, doesn't it? Mm. What it I mean... Although I, I kind of love it just for going mm. straight to the... To the heart of things, I love I love that boldness more than I did in the in the first one. Yeah, I guess the, by by contrast, whilst you don't get the searing quality of Thai food, the the, the rose otto and the Damascus and the rose de mai do give a, quite a nice velvety underpinning to this. Yeah, I can I can perceive on um, even on the card here, I can perceive a very very smooth and cushiony sort of feeling underneath mm. it yeah i did uh, on skin i found that Smoky, this did yeah. have quite a kind of burnt quality i found the yeah. burnt quality a little a little bit too much and um yeah i just my i just wanted a little bit more brightness i mean i'll just yeah, make some kind of notes that. i'm just thinking of another um rose oud which uses hindi oud jiraiya by sultan pasha atars um is a gr it's one of my favourite rose ouds. So it's got a Hindi oud. It's also got some Cambodian oud, which softens the Hindi oud. But it's got Thai for rose, it's, yeah. which gives brightness. And it's also got a lot of osmanthus, which just rounds oh. off and gives a kind of a fruity roundness to it, which I feel this is maybe lacking a bit. Are you starting yeah. to get the burnt quality? I feel. Oh, definitely. I feel. Definitely. I feel that the, the, once the, the funk doesn't actually last that long. The, the opening is very funky, it's but just then kind of the edges creeping in. Mm. I get a lot of burnt smoke. Yeah. I mean, I guess smoke is burnt, but you know what I mean, like burnt smokiness. Yeah, I, I mean, I could have taken this coming a little bit further into the into the journey, but actually, I have to say, I love it for what it is as well. I really, mm. I think. I think the, the quality is fantastic. The quality is exceptional. And what's, so in the dry down, I only get the rose around the mid. It kind of adds a richness and then, it, and then it disappears and I'm left with the rose. But then what then does appear is a bit of oak moss wow. when I tried it. And the oak moss, as well as a kind of slight bitterness, I found had helped create a kind of um, tobacco-y feel. I which, already which I quite, feel a little yeah. bit of a tobacco -y aspect going on here. Yeah. For sure. Quite ashy as well. Yeah, smoky, smoky, ashy, with um, with tobacco at the at the end. Mm. I just, I mean, the qu the quality is is great. This is definitely an oud rose with the emphasis massively on the oud, and it's obviously. Yeah. Um, and, and if we were to compare it to you know Obisidori or Bortnikov, this is more oud centric than most. Yeah. You know, it really is, maybe than Russian oud, uh, but this really is, if you're an oud lover, check it out. I just want a little bit more light. Yeah. Personally, just... I would love some Thai rose in there or, or, or just something else to add some twinkle or maybe just another bit of a Cambodian or a Thai oud just to add a bit of roundness. It feels like we have an accord <coughs> in a bottle and we need, we need to combine that with yeah, another it's, accord. I feel it's nearly there. Mm. Uh, I do. I do like it though. They, just for the oud itself. Right. Bold and unapologetic oud. So last one. So this one is not released. So I don't know the price of this at the time of recording. I also don't know the notes of this last one. Fleur de oud. Oh, 
which um, so we're expecting. We almost had Fleur de Nude. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we go. Let's have a good spray. It's worth nothing in the bottle. It's got to be out there. Yeah. There we are. Thank you. So this is very. That's this is a very different. So you definitely get user on this. Ooh, no idea. I think that might be the sea god. I think it's the Peruvian flying type. Oh, I get, uh, I get a really beautiful, uplifting mm. opening of yuzu yeah. and grapefruit. That's a very, very oh. nice opening. That's a That's really, nice really, opening. really, really beautiful. Mm. And it feels exotic. It, it feels as if you're, oh. you are being transported away. <clears throat> and you're starting to get those white florals, aren't you? Yeah, straight those away. Those jasmine. Yeah. You're starting to get a slightly chewy white floral, mm. a bit indolic. I mean, oh. thinking about the oud of the previous one, it's amazing that I'm getting nothing here so far mm. of, of oud. And I know, I mean, I know that, that it's obviously a different, mm. it's a different type. And that's kind of wonderful, isn't it? That it can be so versatile. This well, that's, I mean, I don't know the ingredients of this, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing like Cambodian or Thai. I, I would say maybe Cambodian to go with, because there's kind of like sweet notes. Um, mm. oh, I getting yeah. sort of green, kind of green Provence herbs as well. Yeah, I get definitely a, a, a green vine herbaceousness. I just, I, you know, I, I'm picturing images of garden and, and, it, and it feels like that, um, you know, I've said this idea before, this kind of like night garden of, of rich narcotic florals, yeah. the scent kind of overwhelming you. Absolutely. Um, this is really beautiful. Mm. Um, a little bit sticky as well. Really sticky, like yeah. Really like, all, all, sticky. I think chewy. Like you yeah. can bite, you can bite, you bite your way through it. I don't know if there's tuberose, but the feeling you get with tuberose, it doesn't. It's there for me that feeling. Yeah, me. but it's certainly the sensation of tu tuberose. I did what I found on right when I when I yeah uh, ripe bananas yeah overripe. I would yeah. say there's an overripe floor. When it gets to the mid, I think the florals get quite overripe and very dense, and. My only, I have very few criticisms of this fragrance actually. What I did feel is when you get to the mid, I wanted the florals to bloom a bit. And I wondered if yeah. something like some hedione um, or some musks or something could have just helped open up that mid a little bit. Because, you know, as with natural perfumery, yeah. it can get a bit dense and heavy. And I think that did happen in the middle. Um, and I actually then found, I, I actually preferred the dry down to the mid because when you get to the dry down, the florals did actually seem, seem to dissipate. As uh -huh. the oud became a bit more um, obvious, the florals dissipated. And so you're actually a little bit more aware of them separating out a bit yeah. in the dry down. It's, yeah, it's nice to be able to actually, mm. to pick them apart and pick them out. Mm. I mean, overall- <laughs> something really familiar there as well. I can't put my finger on. I mean, this is, this reminds me more of a kind of Bortnikov composition, I think. Maybe, yeah. In that it's got that, like, you know, kind of jaw dropping opening. Very elegant, very elegant. I mean, very sort of. Parisian. For me, for me, this of the four is the best composition. I really, I really like the Santal. I think that's really, really beautiful. But this, this feels as if the composition is the most thought out. Yeah. I felt. It's right, oh, and it's love. This is really lovely to wear on skin. I found with the 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 orange castorium, there's some great materials. It didn't quite. It wasn't mm, a complete fragrance. Yeah. I even feel with the oud damascena, um, some lovely materials. It didn't quite. They can feel a bit too naked on their own sometimes, can't they? They, they do need a blend, and they do need they do need to play a part in a mm. wider, in a bigger picture. I mean, the Santal Segura actually is really. That does feel like a really... Yeah, that's glorious. That's <laughs> really glorious. Nutty as well, beautifully, beautifully nutty. Yeah. Really, mm. really beautiful. Yeah. But I, I'm not getting the oud there at all, but uh, is it... Like I, 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 no, I didn't get it until, until, until the end. I don't... I don't. Oh, a little salty, ambergris kind of... Is that in the um, Fleur d'Oud? Yeah. Mm. I, I feel the oud was, you know, definitely there. It just wasn't quite so dominating. I mean, anywhere near as dominating. It is much more about the florals than the oud, I feel. Mm. 
I that's definitely more well-rounded and yeah. blended, isn't it? That feels like it. Yeah. I feel it's a really elegant composition. That feels like it's had some time to sort of sit and settle and for the exchange of, of, of notes and accords to happen. But that Santasago is also mm. really, really yeah. beautiful. I'm I think, really impressed. Interesting actually. else. I tell you what, I would love to see what he does next. Yeah, because absolutely. I think, absolutely. I think they're all, all four. They're, they're, there's, there's really great quality ac across the board. I think, um, you know, the one I think is the most polished in terms of perfumery is the one which is yet to be released. Yeah, yeah, I would totally agree. I think the Santel Segura is great, but I think the Fleur de Oud real shows mm. skill. Yeah. And I think we've maybe got the best to come. Yeah, well, him. and the Fleur, the Fleur de Oud, it, it kind of has, um, it has a sort of restraint about it, which I love. Mm. It doesn't shout. I mean, the other three do shout in their different ways. Mm. This, this very much invites you in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a very kind of confident, subtle, I mean, not to say it's small scale, but... No, and bit, it's, it's beautiful it as well. It has a subtlety really to it, yeah. Gorgeous. Interesting house. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what he does next. Absolutely. Um, let us know what you think. I mean, as I said, I don't know the, the price or, or the 